Hello guys, welcome. Yes, welcome back to week number seven of our summer program. Miss Sage and I were so very, very glad that you're able to be with us. We want you to know that we're still praying for you. We're praying for you and your family. We're praying that you and your family will, will have good health and that you'll have a good spirit. And we're praying that God will allow us to be back together very, very soon. And we know he will. All right. And so continue, continue to wear that smile. All right. The same smile that's so beautiful and the same smile that God has blessed you with. All right. That's so important. But if you want to learn more about love, then you're in the right place. Because today our lesson is all about love. But before we jump into the lesson, I want you to join me for a word of prayer. So let us pray. Dear Father, our God in heaven, we're so very thankful to you for your love and for your kindness and for your mercy that you've given to each and every one of us. We are so very thankful for waking us up this morning. We're so very thankful that you watched over us through last night when we slept. And now we pray, dear Father, that with this day, this beautiful day that you have blessed us to be a part of, we pray, dear God, that you will help us to be more like your son, Jesus Christ. We pray that you will help us to, to act more like Jesus, to talk more like Jesus, and that we'll let the love of Jesus show in our life each and every day. And so we pray that you'll be with us as we study your word and help us that we'll learn and that we can apply this word to our daily lives each and every day. It's in Jesus name we pray and we ask all of these blessings. Amen. All right, guys. So the title of our lesson today is love is. All right. Love is. Now, this is a super lesson. And this is where you'll learn more about how to receive God's love and also how we can share God's love with other people. All right. I hope you're ready to learn more about God's love, because if you are, then you're in the right place. But before we get into the lesson, then we have to do one thing. And I think you know what that one thing is. Yes, that's our memory verse. So let's go ahead and hit our memory verse before we move into the lesson. So the memory verse for this lesson is from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 13, verse number 13. And here's what it says in 1 Corinthians, chapter 13, verse number 13. Here's what it says. So now faith, hope, and love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Now, let me hit that one more time. And now abideth faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. All right. And your second memory verse is found in the book of Romans. Romans chapter 13, verse number 10. And this is it. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilling the law. And you've got it. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilling the law. Now you have it, all both of your memory verses, and we pray that you've studied them and that you have retained them to your mind. And we want you to load all of the memory verses into your mind. Because once you load them into your mind, then that means everywhere you go, you'll always have God's word with you. And everywhere you go, you're going to need God's word. All right. So that's important. OK, so don't forget about your worship songs. 
because we've downloaded your favorite worship songs right on this website. So you're able to go there and click on your favorite song and I know that you're going to enjoy those worship songs. All right, so don't forget the worship songs. All right, now we're about to jump into your lesson video. But before we do, let me say a little bit about the video. Now, today's lesson, Love Is, explores the famous verses of Paul found in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. In this passage, we will discover that God gives us many wonderful gifts. But the greatest of these gifts is love. In fact, love is so important that without it, all other gifts are meaningless. Today, I want to share three big ideas that connect to love. First is unity. Love brings unity. As we share the gospel and love, we have the opportunity to bring friends and family together like never before. And second is purpose. Love helps us to discover our purpose. When we use our gifts in love, we bring glory to God and live out his destiny for our lives. And finally is transformation. Love transforms. The Bible teaches us that God is love. And so the more we let his love shape our lives, the more we are transformed into the image of his son, Jesus Christ. Our prayer is that through this lesson, we are all equipped to discuss with each other and our families what love truly is. So let's use this lesson to, in, to discuss the importance of receiving God's love and sharing his love with others. So make sure that you have your Bibles ready because after the lesson video, we're gonna come right back and we're gonna hit you with Q and A's and that's your questions and answers. All right, so pay close attention and enjoy your lesson video. God gives us many wonderful gifts, such as the ability to speak well, spiritual understanding, or a heart for giving to the needy. As the Apostle Paul worked to spread the good news of Jesus, the church in a place called Corinth began to argue over which gift was the best. Paul wrote to this church to remind them that love is the most important gift of all. In fact, Paul would tell the church of Corinth that without love, every other gift God gives becomes meaningless. Love is the only way to use all other gifts as God intended. Some people are gifted in speaking the truth of God. When people with this magnificent gift are filled with the love of God and speak about what He has done in their lives, their audiences stop and listen. Their words help to teach about Jesus and to open otherwise cold, hard hearts. But without love, these same words are empty and have no meaning. The Apostle Paul said, without love, a person with this gift is a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. People gifted with spiritual understanding of who God is and His mighty power know what God is capable of and what that means for our lives. People with this gift who are filled with the love of God can confidently face any difficult situation and never fear because they know God is more powerful than anything they may encounter. The Apostle Paul writes, that while people with this gift can have a faith that moves mountains without love, such miracles will look like nothing more than cheap magic tricks. 
God gives some people hearts that care for others. Whether they are giving money, time, or talent, these people are following Jesus' command to love others as Jesus loves us. But Paul explains that if a person gave away everything, including his own life, he gains nothing if it is done without love. Without love, the giving this person does is not meant to help others and glorify God, but is an attempt to show how great the giver is. So, if these powerful and wonderful gifts are nothing without love, what is love? Paul explains that love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous of what other people have, and it does not brag or act proud. Love is not rude, selfish, or quick-tempered. Love doesn't keep a list of all the wrong or bad things everyone has ever done. Love does not find happiness in evil things, but is delighted by the truth. Ultimately, love is outward, giving, and selfless. It's no coincidence that these descriptions of love also describe Jesus. Jesus is love. Paul explained how temporary these gifts are using the example of a child growing up. When children mature into adults, they can see life as bigger than themselves and their own personal needs. According to Paul, on earth, we are like children. We can only see part of the picture, but in heaven, we will have an understanding that is perfect and true. In heaven, we will fully grow up in Christ. Love is so important for us to focus on because of all the magnificent gifts God gives us. Love is eternal. Love is at the heart of everything God does and asks us to do, making it something we should focus our lives on. The love we experience on earth is good, but in the presence of God once we're in heaven, love will not only be felt, but also will be seen. When we see the face of God, we will truly know what love is. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that video as much as I did. You know, when me and Miss Sage watched that video, we really loved it. We really enjoyed it. And I'm sure that you did also. So now, just like I told you, it's time for your Q and A's. And you know what they are, questions and answers. Hope you've got your uh, Bible handy and I'll give you some time to look for the uh, scripture but I think that you'll probably know these questions. All right, so let's start with question number one. And here's question number one, guys. What were the people in the church in Corinth arguing about? What were they arguing about? All right. We'll give you uh, some time to, to find that answer. So here's the answer. The people in the church in Corinth were arguing about which spiritual gift was the best. All right, and here's my notes on that. You see two identical cars in a parking lot, but one is blue and the other is green. Which car is better? Outside of color preference, neither is better than the other because they're all the same car. No one is better than anyone else. God gives us gifts that suit the purpose he created us for. And none of these spiritual gifts are better than the other or make the people who have them better than anyone else. All right. So there you have it. Now, question number two. And here's the question for you. P 
people gifted in speaking the truth of God help to do what? All right. So I'll give you a second or two to look for that answer. All right, now here's the answer to question number two. Here it is. They help to teach about Jesus and to open cold, hard hearts. All right, there it is. You got it. That's your answer. And here's my notes. If you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich without jelly, have you made the sandwich correctly? No, we made a peanut butter sandwich. While peanut butter sandwiches are yummy, it's not a proper PB&J sandwich without the jelly. Our spiritual gifts are powerful, but they are not complete or effective when we use them without love. So there you have it. That brings us to question number three. So question number three is, what can people gifted with spiritual understanding of God do? And I'll give you some time to research that if you like. All right, here's the answer to number three. They can face any difficult situation and never fear because they trust in God. That's it. And here's my notes. You sit down to watch TV, but the power cord is missing. Can you get it to turn on without electricity? Even though we have the TV, it requires electricity. Without a power cord, the TV won't work. We may have spiritual gifts, but without love, they won't work. Love is what gives our gifts Power. All right. So there you have it. And that brings us to question number four. OK, and here's question number four for you guys. The descriptions of what love is also describes who? There it is. The descriptions of what love is also describes who? Give you a few seconds to think about that. All right, answer to number four, the description of what love is also describes Jesus. There you have it, that's your answer. And here's my notes to go along with that. You ace a test at school that your friend failed. Is it wrong to be proud of yourself? No, we worked hard to understand the concepts on that test. We should be proud of ourselves. Being proud is not wrong in this situation when we tease our friend about how well he did in comparison. It is wrong to assume that we are smarter than our friend because of their test score. Pride becomes a problem when we start to think we are better than others. That is simply not true. God created each of us, making every person on the planet a miracle and a part of God's plan. And he loves us equally. To show love in this situation, we can offer to help our friend study for the next test. So there you have it. Now, number five, that brings us to question number five. And here is question number five. On earth, we only have part of the picture. What will we have in heaven? Give you some time to think about that answer. All right, here it is. Answer to number five. In heaven, we will have an understanding that is perfect and true. There you have it. Now listen to this. Have you ever figured out something you thought was too hard 
to understand. Most of us have encountered something like that in school. For some of us, we experience this in math class. For others, it's language arts. The moment we figure it out, it's like someone turned on the lights and we can see everything clearly. It's an amazing feeling. Here on earth, we understand the world we live in and spiritual truths about life as best as we can, but there is just so much that we cannot understand. When we get to heaven, it will be like someone turned on a light as big as the sun. We will understand everything. So there you have it. That brings us to our last and final question. Question number six. And here it is. Of all the gifts that God gives us, which is eternal? So I'll give you a few seconds to think about that one. Here it is, the answer to question number six. Love is eternal. And you probably could have guessed it right. Love is eternal. And boys and girls, that ends our questions for today. All right, I wanna give you one more set of notes. Would you like to share a time when you recently felt love? This can be a story about how you felt loved by God or someone in your life. Share your stories with your families or your close friend. This feeling of love is what God wants us to spread everywhere we go. And he has given us special gifts to help us do just that. Who doesn't want to make everyone experience such a fantastic feeling? All right, so there you have it. Spread love everywhere you go. That's the gift that God gives you, and that gift is eternal. All right, so there you have all your questions for today, and we sure do hope that you scored a 100%, and I'm sure you did, all right? Now, that brings us to our big idea. So the big idea is, for this week, the big idea is God has given us gifts to help spread his love. The gifts that God has given us is to help us spread his love. All right. Don't forget now. Also, you can enjoy your fun activity sheets. All right. There's lots of activities for you to enjoy and activities that you can do along as a family. All right. Also, don't forget about your something new section. Now, remember, in the something new section, you'll find two things there. Number one, you'll find words to know from our lesson. And the word to know from our lesson this week is agape love, agape love. And when you look to that word to know, you'll find all about agape love. And your memory verse meaning, you'll also find the memory verse meaning and all of that you will find in the something new section of your lesson. So don't forget to check the something new lesson. So for next week, next week, our lesson, oh, and you're gonna love this. Next week, our lesson is called the armor of God. And we're gonna talk all about the armor of God. Next week, you've got one memory verse, and this is your memory verse next week. It'll be found in the book of Ephesians chapter six and verse number 11. So make sure you start studying your memory verse so you'll be all ready when we get back next week. All right, Ephesians chapter six and verse number 11. So don't forget the armor of God is coming right back at you next week. All right, boys and girls, this brings us to the end of another one of our super Bible lessons. Oh, we hate to see you go, but you got work to do. You got memory verses you got to study, and I've got to prepare my lesson, all right, for next week. And so I'll be busy doing my lesson. You'll be busy learning your memory verses, all right? And remember to keep a smile on your face. 
because a smile on your face is worth far more than silver, gold, and platinum. All right? So keep smiling until we meet again. Why don't you join me for a prayer as we close our lesson today? Let us pray. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to you. We're so thankful, dear God, for your love and for the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit that guides us each and every day. We're so thankful, dear Father, for your Son, Jesus Christ. We are so thankful, dear Heavenly Father, for the love that he showed us because he came to the earth and he gave his life so that we all could have life through his death. And so we're so very thankful. We're thankful to you for loving us enough that you would send your only son to sacrifice his life for us. And so now we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that we'll take the word that we have learned and that we will apply it to our lives and that we'll use it and we'll let this same word be our guide our God from earth to heaven. It's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray and ask it all, amen. Amen and amen.